Okay, Don back uh, with the uh, AVG virus scan on the AS Rock machine, Windows 7. It is finished, and uh, some of the ones I showed last time got a terrible itch. Okay, uh, they're still in the window there. Oh, there's a few new ones. Yeah, HBCD then Sardu which is the app that I use to use a lot to build multi-boot uh, rescue systems and whatnot. Uh, Sardu 202C sort of unresolved may be infected by unknown virus. Okay. Same file. Oh, one of them's X, six, six, X for 64-bit. I really don't kind of doubt that's anything but just something that, about the way it works because it can write something in it that makes you know how it can write to uh, write your USB sticks and everything that it may be throwing off something uh, but that was that's the ones I've been talking about that it's one of the ones that have been ticking it shows different things in different programs you know some of them gave them a name though this one just doesn't really know what it is, but it doesn't trust it. Um, oh, LT Power CAD zip contains macros. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, it would. It's, but at least it knows it's not a Trojan or something. Uh, that Kingo root again. Found the male sig gen generic C six C. Now, one thing about Kingle Root, uh, you know, these programs that do this, you know, that can root your phone, um, they do things that are considered uh, things that malware do, but especially on your Android phones, you know. Uh, but the thing is, how do you know if the person writing it didn't put any real sure enough malware in it? Uh, <coughs> that could infect your Windows system. Now I wouldn't say this is the source of my problems because this is the only machine it, that I put this app on. Right, I mean that I, well I had downloaded it on my Linux machine, but it's the only one I installed it on. And uh, because I do my Serpent in Linux and I don't risk, you know, getting drive-by viruses and all that, I hardly ever surf the internet at all on uh, in a Windows machine. That's why I just can't believe I got three infected machines. So. Uh, never happened like this before, ever. And, uh, but I just go, you know, once every, as each time I scan, so a few more other things run through my head, like where that could have came from, what got it started. And that's what I want to find is the root cause of the root kits, so I can uh, prevent it from happening again. But, uh, Oh, and uh, whenever, and I use, when I download things, I use, uh, I always forget the name of it, but it's a vir online vir link scanner, uh, add, add on for Firefox, uh, I think it works in Windows, but uh, I use it in Firefox and Linux, uh oh, another itch, and uh, <coughs> anyway, it will scan the links, you, you can right click on a link before you go to it and say scan with uh, BBA, no, the BBA Rescue is another rescue scanner. Anyway, uh, maybe it'll come to me later. And it'll scan it with 10, 20 in virus engines. Pretty cool. And uh, I, you know, sometimes a lot of times, sometimes you'll come up with flat out infections, or uh, and you don't. I don't go there then. You know, I definitely don't download the file, especially when I'm downloading a file. I don't do it on every link I click, but anything that I might suspect. Or, uh, of course, that's when they get you is when you don't suspect it. But uh, any link I click to download any kind of file for Linux or Windows, I, uh, ISOs, executes, zip files, anything. PDFs especially. Uh, you know, I do that first. It takes up more time. But it's become, I feel, ne it's necessary now. So that's why I can't believe I got such a bad infection because I've been practicing that for the last year solid, you know, almost in the last couple of, two or three years I've been using that thing, that, that 
of an add-on, but uh, the last year saw uh, pretty much the last year saw it. I, I I just hardly download any kind of files unless I just flat forget, like on a PDF or something, uh, without scanning them first. And uh, <coughs> so uh, Kingo Root, back to Kingo Root. I was uh, you know I found out what I needed by reading uh, some you know doing the Google searches what kind of app, what app I needed and I didn't and uh, I scanned the first link it came up as being infected and two or three out of the one one to three out of the you know 20 or so so I thought well I don't know about that I, this is a Windows system you know because it was this file this program is a Windows file that you install on Windows to root your phone with via USB so uh, I thought, well, there's more links. I kept looking through the links and going around and around, reading other, uh, you know, information forms or whatever about how to root the phone. I thought maybe I can find a different application. And after finding the same file, the Kangaroo EXE, three or four, five different sites, I finally found one uh, that was actually linked to. The, I found a guy's website, the developer's website, and I linked from his website didn't show any uh, you know bad bad marks we'll say on the scan so um, went ahead and downloaded it I was about to not do it you know because I thought well heck and that's also you know he explained on his site and I've read this on many other things over the years how the, some of the programs work will get flagged by most or many or some depending on what it is and how it works uh, virus scanners and so basically you know he's saying it's a false positive positive. and uh, <coughs> so you know I went ahead and did it didn't have any problems you know vast didn't throw, throw up a problem and actually this is the first of all the six eight programs that I've scanned this system with it said anything bad about the, you know said anything was bad about the Kingo root so that's what I'm going on on about it trying to try to figure out you know the difference between uh, false positives and uh, positive positives. <laughs> and uh, for instance, a Howard's Boot CD up there says Trojan Horse Dropper. Well, that would be something like you know that's dropping Trojan horses in, around your system. There's all you know some of them that uh, like the, it, it's it's encapsulated in in a zip or file you know a, a, a compressed file or some of them are downloaders. I saw that too. I saw um, some of the other scans. I saw some Trojan horse downloaders. And that can really be tricky, you know. It's the file itself is fine, but it downloads the, the Trojan horse. So they're getting more tricky. Uh, and uh, I guess that's why once you get infected, you end up. If you really want to clean it up, you end up running eight scans to even think about getting it cleaned up. I want to grab my mouse and try to go next, and it didn't do any good. <coughs> so, down here at the results, it shows the large number of sca files scanned that I can't even read right now, and uh, in the millions, <laughs> folks like. Infections found six. Uh, warnings re reported 33. Errors reported zero. Files skipped zero. Well, that's good that there's no files skipped. Okay, hit enter. Okay, here we go, a full list. And each one of them's got a star by it. And you can select, let's see, action, select all, deselect all, return action. So if I hit enter, then it's going to do the action, or probably pick my action, looks like. I've never run this AVG scan before. Rescue disk. Okay, components deal, found a mail sign generic okay feedback execute found mail sign generic flash core deal found mail sign generic gg if all mail sign oh q jpeg can go root mail sign generic c6 c now I could go get on another system. Well, I closed, shut that other system down. I mean, if I wanted to look all that up, I'd have to go get on another system. Because this one ain't going to surf the internet, of course, in, a, in this program. Uh, some of them do have a web browser and they have a full graphic user interface, but this one doesn't. 
So, a whole bunch of those. Those must all have to do with King Garud, I'm going to bet. 7-zip zill, 7-zip execute. Huh. Unless there was a, some instance of 7-zip that was infected and it was spreading it. That would be one way they would really want to do it, you know, spread it to every file that it zipped or unzipped. If it was unzipping a good file and it just throw a little bit of root rootkit in there along with the rest of it, you know, who would know? You would hope a bastard somebody would know. Okay. ADB win. That is in there over and over and over. That is the biggest majority. It's all male sign generic. So at some point here, I'm going to need to look that up and find out what it is. Oh, there's one un very unusual. A text file. Oh, it's a tracking cookie. Yard. Yar. Yadro. Y cookie dot Y A D R O. Just a number in front of a text file. Okay. Well, that's a tracking cookie. You know, not, not a huge virus or anything. Oh, and this track phone generic client provisioning handler. Virus identified Android DC. B E dot Y P. Okay. Track phone generic client provisioning handler. This came on the phones and I remember this was in my my phone this phone that I'm using. And wouldn't it be something that the phones what introduced the virus? But like I said, uh I haven't been copying these files. Well I have some on uh I actually do I did some backing up onto my main uh, Lenovo I five. Most of it's on the Windows machine. And because I kept, I hadn't decided where to back them up at first, you know, but I needed them. Ended up realizing I need lots of space. That's why I went to the Windows machine. I even put some on my web server. I don't know if I ever deleted them or not. Just like some early backups. But and it would have had these files. But you know, I didn't uh, go get the backups and copy any of these. The only files I would have copied back over. Especially not back to the Windows machine. If I did copy them, it'd be back to the phone. And uh, the ones I copied were the ones I downloaded from uh, um, Google Play. There's one, Bible Audio. I, don't remember, I guess it's a Bible in audio or something. Corrupted executable file. HBCD customizer. Trojan horse dropper generic. IC4.GCGUV. Two times. Okay, <coughs> two. That file must be in two different. Well, it might be in like uh, Hirons Boot City 11, 14, and 15. There's three of them in there, I believe, that I have in there. Uh, and they're they come in zip files, and then you, you unpack them. And so that's why there would be, you know, more than just ISOs of it, because it has some of these helper programs like the customizer and stuff. Either that, or it pulled it out of the ISO. Either way. But I'm I know I've seen that customizer in my unpack folder. So. so every one of those, I don't care whether or not I have them or not. It's going to break my... Of course, that Kingo root out will be broke. I'm afraid the only thing you don't like about doing it this way is, you know, the uninstaller probably won't work so that you could go back and uninstall it. But at this point, I'm not going to worry about that. I can delete the folders at least and use a, like Glare Utilities to clean up the registry and stuff. Uh, like HTTP CD, I was actually getting ready to use it to reinstall Windows 7 on some these other machines. Actually, I may not do that now, but I'll probably do it at some point on this one because I'll never be comfortable with it again, even if I, you know, completely. Of course, I'm never completely comfortable with them. You, you know, you always know that there may be something bad on there that you don't know about yet. So, that's it. Oh, there is a couple more. I went ahead and paged down. Doesn't make it doesn't look like you could page down, but you could. So I just started doing it, and guess what? It worked. Sardu execute may be infected with an unknown virus. Sardu 64 x 64 may be infected. Now that's the one. All the different versions of Sardu, different ones came up in different. At first, I ignored them. You know. Uh, finally, I started just saying, "Okay, I'm going to delete them just to be safe." So. Uh, Oh, found a mail sign generic C six C. Now here's the thing. If that 
Oh, that's King of Root, not Sardu. Again, okay. I was fixing to say, if Sardu has that in it and it's in a bunch of files, then Sardu's been spreading them, but nope. Because I've been making... It could be spreading it to other machines because I've been making using it to make my... Uh, but I, uh, I've been using Sardu to make my uh, multi-boot, but I haven't been using Sardu, just the one that just says Sardu.exe, uh, unless that's a file that can't... No, because, uh, yeah, that didn't come out of a zip file, I don't think. I think that's just an older version of Sardu. Most, I got to, you know, like maybe the first time I download it, I'll leave it like that. And then after that, I start putting the version numbers on there to be able to tell them apart. But a lot of times, the very first time I download a program, I'll leave it, you know, just plain, you know, setup. Well, I don't like setup exe. I'll give it the name of the program, but whatever the name of the program and then exe or zip or whatever. Or there you go, you know, x. They, I'm sure they named it x64. Because if I name one, I don't put underscore. I put just a dash in there. It's easier to type easier to read. You know, uh, underscore can look like a space uh, in some, in, 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 depending on what kind of viewer you're viewing it with. Okay, stop talking now. Hit action. <coughs> Protect. Heal or remove selected files. Skip all. Display report file. I'm going to cough. <coughs> <coughs> have to get a drink and I've already moved my water over to way over there I can't reach it see because I was getting ready to get over there and watch TV and eat supper and go to bed and then I thought well I gotta finish this finish so I gotta I want to finish it up okay so I'm not gonna go look at the uh, report now because basically I just looked at enough of a report be nice to see it Let's just display the report file first. I'm going to see what it looks like. Okay. Long file with actually goes off the end. Can't read it all, so the one I was looking at was good enough. Let's, oh, that's the whole report that was being built while it was scanning. Okay. So I've really looked at pretty much all of it. Might have skipped some things by accident. Okay. So I'm going to say, yeah, I'm not going to skip all. I'm going to say heal or remove. So I guess it's going to decide what to do. Select. Okay, we got a progress bar. I hope it don't take too long. And uh, <coughs> I know a shaky cam is not good, but it's really the only way. Well, I, I have the other phone when I set it to... I can set it up and I do that. I've done that some. I'll show it there. Uh, just like that. I've got it in a cassette case and I can set it up and it'll be still. But the problem is um, I can't, I, you know, right here in the middle is where it needs to be to get a good straight view of what your, your, my screen, and that's right in front of my face, and I can't set it there. So I have to set it off to the side, and I can set it off to the right, and then it's a severe angle. And, you know, it's still, but you can't even think about uh, being able to read any of it. And, and at least this way you can read the bigger text, you know. So, and it's so much quicker to grab this than to get that set up too. So, I guess that's a bit of laziness too. Well, you know, it's it's not just laziness; it's time. Time's a big deal, you know. Time is not on our side. <coughs> okay. Or my side. I'm running out. Running out of time. Okay. Out of time. Oh yeah. I just realized what I said. All selected files were successfully handled. Okay. So they handle it. Handle it, handle it, handle it. Now I'm getting, showing my age. Okay. Uh, quick scan. 
And if you got all three or four of those references of obscure music and television re show references, then, uh, well, I guess you're about my age. I'm 61 today. Happy birthday to me. That's how old I am. Okay. Um, that's right. Today's my birthday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Quick scan, scan. Shut down. Okay. Got sidetracked. So there's your last screen, and uh, so that's it. Shut down, exit. Well, I'm just gonna hit shut down because if I exit, and then I'll, you know, it won't shut down for me. I won't like that. Eject the rescue CD. No, it's not a CD. Okay, so I'll shut it down, then I can just. Uh, Yank out my USB SD card and uh, I'll be done. Okay. Gives you a little output there in the terminal for right quick. I don't, you probably didn't get a chance to see that. Okay. <clears throat> get the old trusty. So I don't know what I'm going to be able to do with this about Hirons. I'm going to have to figure out if it's really infected or not. But uh, that's it for the AVG scan. I actually still have that other Z whatever that I downloaded. So, uh, yeah, black screen, that's all I got. I don't see anything more interesting to show. So, uh, you can see my little truck under there and my uh, KVM switch, I guess. Okay, so... Um, yeah, I think I will do another scan. I mean, each scan comes up with new things in different places, so, you know, I'm not really satisfied that it's clean yet. And at some point, I guess I'll have to say, I can't clean it up. And, uh, you know, if I had a place to put all of my uh, videos, a drive big enough, then I may have to end up getting something but I really don't want to just buy a drive. I mean, I'd like to have a 5 terabyte drive. But the thing is, the ones that are affordable, like $139 to Seagates, uh, they also don't have, they have kind of like, you know, 50 50 reviews in my, uh, maybe. I mean, the review numbers show better than that. But when you read, well, people that have problems with them, they fail. That's what worries me. You don't want to back up on something that might fail, you know. So, if I'm going to spend. And, and, you know, I could, uh, I've been wanting to build a new computer, and if I could just, even if I just got a two, two gig hard drive, you know, that would probably stave me off for a while. At least I thought it would until I started making all these videos. It would have staved me off for a while, but now I don't know. Okay, it's done. <coughs> well, bye for now.